everyone. Welcome to this Tech Talk on the topic of architecting for Internet of Things with ACM Private CA. My name is Rashir Patel. I'm a worldwide security specialist at AWS focused on data protection and cryptography services. I'm co-presenting with Omar Zoma, Senior Security Special, uh, Solutions Architect. Uh, so this talk is geared towards people who are AWS security builders, people in certificate management or PKI roles, or those who have a general interest in the IoT industry. Um, our goal with this talk is for you to come away with new insights about IoT security, uh, AWS's private certificate authority service and its relationship with IoT, and some hands-on guidance on how to get started with building uh, with this service and the benefits that it provides. So what we'll cover over the next hour, uh, a quick overview of the IoT industry and the role that certificates play for providing device identities and the security use cases that are enabled by device certificates. Uh, next, we'll walk through how certificates are provisioned in a manufacturing environment and the pros and cons of different PKI ownership models. Uh, we will show how the AWS service, ACM Private CA, can simplify certificate issuance in an IoT manufacturing environment. Uh, and then we'll have a live demo of this service to show how easy it is to get started, set up a shared certificate authority, um, and customize certificate templates. Uh, and then finally, we have extra time at the end to answer questions. Feel free to drop questions into chat. We'll be sure to answer them before the session ends. So getting started, just to frame the conversation, uh, we have seen IoT devices explode in popularity over the past decade or so. Uh, new use cases are constantly springing up from smart home devices like Amazon Echo and Ring doorbells uh, to even automobiles as connected devices that are very intelligent, you know, with more automation, self-driving, over-the-air software updates, et cetera. And as the IoT industry continues to advance, these devices are becoming smarter, more powerful, more capable, which also means that the potential for misuse becomes greater. Um, so security of these IoT devices should stay top of mind for anyone who operates in this space, both consumers and device manufacturers. So one thing that all of these IoT use cases have in common is that they all involve physical hardware devices. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, but those devices do use digital certificates for device identity and trust. So this may be a little 100 level, but for anyone wondering what private certificates are um, and what they do, well, you can think of certificates as a, a digital ID card that we assign to an endpoint or a device, and it allows us to authenticate that endpoint and create a secure encrypted communication channel with it. Uh, it enables encryption for data in transit so that a distributed network of devices can communicate securely with one another and with your centralized servers. Um, so how exactly do these private certificates help with security? Um, well, there are a handful of different threat vectors that certificates can help mitigate. So first there's data exfiltration. If your device operates over unencrypted networks, well, you know, someone could sit on your communication channel and collect any data that's being transmitted by a device. Um, and now that we have things like wearables and smartwatches that collect personal information and health data, we obviously want to, uh, we don't want that data to fall into the wrong hands. Uh, next, there is the threat of impersonation. A malicious actor could pose as a trusted device using uh, stolen credentials, which can lead to a number of different problems from uh, transmitting false data to having unauthorized access to your internal networks. So having a system in place to manage certificate revocation and renewal uh, can be effective strategy against this. And this last one, device malware, um, it doesn't exactly tie in with certificates per se, but rather digital signature verification, which is a similar cryptographic technology. Uh, so I thought it would be worth, worth touching on just briefly. Um, with this type of attack, a malicious actor could try to install malware onto a device that could be used for surveillance or ransomware, or even hijacking that device for cryptocurrency mining. So being able to verify software updates with digital signatures is one way to mitigate that risk. Um, if you know that you have a device compromised by malware, you can also revoke the certificate for that device to remove it from your network. Um, and this is just really skimming the surface on the topic of IoT security. We could really spend all day on this, but we'll move on to a practical application of uh, provisioning certificates for IoT devices. So as we mentioned earlier, 
uh, every IoT use case involves a physical device that has to be manufactured. And the device maker has to decide at what point during the manufacturing process does a device receive its unique certificate and private key. So to understand this decision, we should start with um, you know, just going through the different entities that make up a manufacturing supply chain. First, you have your device maker. Uh, this, are, this is the organization responsible for you know, product design and development, sales and marketing, uh, distribution sometimes. Um, and often they will have a lead role in the manufacturing process. But in many cases, they will also outsource this piece to a contract manufacturer who sources components and builds the physical device. Um, and then those components, chips, processors, batteries come from component suppliers. So with this you know, layout of uh, different companies, it's typically either the device maker or the contract manufacturer who takes ownership over provisioning certificates uh, to embed in the hardware device. And this delegation varies by industry and by use case, um, also at the discretion of the device maker. For instance, a, a cell phone maker might have an external manufacturing partner who builds the actual phone, um, but an automaker who sells you your car also owns the production line and manufacturing process in-house. So all that to say, um, just like there's no single universal type of supply chain, there's no single best way to provision certificates for your devices. It is important to understand uh, the nature of the relationships in this industry, to understand different PKI setups. Um, so with that framing, um, let's look at some example scenarios of different public key infrastructure setups. Uh, so in this scenario, we have our two parties, device maker and the contract manufacturer. Uh, the device maker owns software and firmware development for the product. Uh, that's pretty standard. And in this scenario, they own the public key infrastructure for provisioning private certificates onto devices. Uh, so for each device they want to build, they provision a unique private cert, uh, embed it onto a firmware image. So if they want to build 100 devices, they have 100 unique firmware images that they then pass over to the manufacturer, um, who's then responsible for loading the firmware onto the device processor as it's being built. Um, this scenario keeps the root of trust under control of the device maker, which is from a security and risk management standpoint, um, a pretty good thing. However, it does add complexity to the manufacturing process. And the device maker is also taking on a lot of the operational burden, um, you know, operating outside of their primary line of business, which is something that, um, you know, we in the world of cloud try to move away from or help customers move away from. Um, so if they, are multi uh, if they are operating multiple product lines with say thousands of devices and multiple external supply chain partners, um, this setup does add a great deal of complexity to the overall process. So let's look at another option. In the second scenario, we have the same two parties, uh, except now the contract manufacturer owns the PKI. Um, this is great for the device maker. They can essentially outsource that entire piece of the manufacturing process um, to an external party. Uh, the device maker simply has to provide a golden ticket firmware image uh, with an interface for injecting credentials to the manufacturer, um, who can then go and provision certificates for each device during the manufacturing process. This setup is a little more streamlined and efficient. However, you do need a high level of trust with those external partners that, that work with you. Um, if someone external owns the root CA for your device certificates, uh, then you have to trust them absolutely to maintain that root of trust securely. And it can also present challenges around certificate expiration and rotation. You are reliant on the external partner to handle all of those tasks. And so while this is a nice option, um, from a supply chain security standpoint, it does introduce a lot of risk. So this third scenario uses some of the built-in features of ACM Private CA to offer a nice middle ground from the two previous scenarios. Um, and while this diagram looks a lot more complex in practice, it's really not that different from the other scenarios. Uh, so in this scenario, the device maker is using ACM Private CA and owns the root CA in a protected AWS account. They set up a CA hierarchy to have subordinate CAs in separate accounts signed by the root so that they aren't issuing end user certificates directly from that root CA. And that's a standard best practice. Uh, now, the secret sauce here is leveraging a tool called AWS Resource Access Manager, which allows you to share any subordinate CAs across multiple accounts. So 
the device maker is able to create another separate AWS account under their organization, um, and they can really limit the access on that account uh, with policy settings. And so they can take that account, provide it to any third-party manufacturers in their supply chain, um, and again, being able to set the policies on that account. So it can't do anything except uh, issue certificates from the shared subordinate CAs. Um, and so a contract manufacturer with, with access to that very restricted account can still use it to provision certificates to load onto devices during the manufacturing process, but that's it. Um, they're pretty much restricted to doing just that. And the beauty of this is, you know, the device maker can provide separate AWS accounts to any number of external partners, which is really good for complex supply chains. Um, or say if you are changing manufacturing partners or if you add a new one because your business is growing rapidly, uh, this is a, a really, um, you know, simplified way to manage that growth. Uh, the access to those certificate issuing accounts can be revoked at any time, and the device maker is the true owner of the root CA. So they have the ability to monitor everything taking place within their APK environment uh, through the AWS console. Um, one thing I do have to mention, this isn't a perfect risk-free solution. The contract manufacturer still has to be trustworthy uh, since private keys can be exposed during the manufacturing process. That is, you know, an inherent risk for any manufacturing environment. Um, it's the, the nature of the industry. Um, but with the solution, at least, what it does is it helps to minimize risk from a control and observability and business continuity standpoint. Um, so let's go into some of the differentiating features of ACM Private CA that make it a good fit for IoT device manufacturing. First benefit is the, the ability to set up complex CA hierarchies. Um, and this can all be done with a few clicks in the AWS console. You can add or remove CAs without worrying about the infrastructure needed to support them. Um, this can allow you to have a single root CA for your organization, but multiple subordinates and issuing CAs for different lines of business and different use cases. You can have a CA for internal you know, development and testing and a separate isolated CA for production and live devices. Uh, with this feature, you have the ability to scale up and down easily, taking advantage of AWS's elastic resources, and it also gives you central control through your AWS console for monitoring and visibility. You can track who, what, uh, and where certificates are being issued uh, through your PKI. Um, and it does support up to five levels within a hierarchy, so you can get um, pretty granular with your setups here. The next benefit, uh, as we mentioned earlier, is the ability to use AWS Resource Access Manager uh, to share CAs across multiple AWS accounts without racking up bills for having new separate standalone CAs for every account. Um, you know, each CA typically would cost you $400 a month, so sharing CAs across accounts can help reduce that upfront, uh, upfront cost. Uh, this is a really good feature for cost optimization again, um, and it is really the feature that enables this IoT manufacturing use case. Uh, the device maker can control what AWS accounts or roles that an external partner has access to um, and what API calls those accounts can make. So this really delivers that fine-grained access control aspect. And then finally, you know, ACM Private CA has the ability to customize certificates that are issued. So you can assign custom lifetimes for certificates. Uh, maybe you want it to expire after one week, or you want it to be valid for the next 100 years. Both are possible. You can also uh, now, as of March 2022, assign custom subject names, extensions, and name constraints for your certificates. Um, and this feature has a lot of interesting applications from making it easier to manage and identify certificates at scale to tagging and categorizing for, say, uh, analytics or machine learning use cases. Um, one other use case that I find really interesting um, is the ability to meet industry standards. So you may be familiar with one called Matter, which is a new standard for smart home devices uh, that has you know, a number of different requirements, but one of those requirements is uh, being able to set custom identifiers on your certificates. So from the perspective of, of a device maker, if you want to stay aligned with new industry standards, uh, be a part of the Matter ecosystem for connected devices, this feature can help you do that. So uh, enough overview. Um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Omar for a demo of the capabilities we just talked about in ACM Private CA. Um, 
show you how to set up resource sharing across accounts, um, as well as issuing certificates to an IoT device. Yeah, thank you so much, Rashir. So like Rashir said, uh, my name is Omar, and I'm a specialist uh, security solutions architect here at AWS. And I'll be doing a, a demo today of essentially what the certificate hierarchy looks like uh, it, right here on the right side. What I'll talk about is uh, a few things. Uh, number one, we'll talk about this architecture. And you can see here that uh, we have a root CA that exists in a separate account. And that root CA has a subordinate CA that's also in a separate account that's also owned uh, by the device maker. And this device maker subordinate CA is then shared with the contract manufacturer. And so this architecture is scalable in that you can add additional manufacturers and share additional, additional subordinate CAs. And so uh, what you can expect to see here is potentially a multitude of contract manufacturers and a multitude of different subordinate CAs. So this gives the device maker the ability to share their subordinate certificate authority and allow the contract manufacturers to go ahead and start to issue certificates. So I'll talk through this architecture. And what happens is uh, I'm going to demonstrate how um, you can control access uh, from the device maker side and limit what the contract manufacturer can do. For example, in the demo, uh, I'll be showing you uh, an attempt at the contract manufacturer to disable uh, the certificate authority or delete the certificate authority, which they should they aren't able to do. So there are sets of permissions that the device maker sets up that will limit the ability for the contract manufacturer to do that. On issue certificate in uh, the IoT space, uh, there are uh, customers that require very uh, custom attributes inside of their certificates. And so I'm gonna show you how to pass custom attributes into the certificate as well. Um, I'll walk you through uh, the issue certificate API and this will all be done in the CLI. So why don't we get started? And uh, I will walk you through uh, an issue uh, of a certificate. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to issue a cert. And I'm gonna walk through um, passing in the uh, ability to pass in custom object identifiers. Um, and these can be passed into uh, private CAs or certs. In this example, I'm going to uh, show you how to issue a certificate and I'm gonna pass in uh, the custom attributes via JSON file. So uh, let me show you the issue certificate API call and what's your, uh, the parameters that you are uh, validating here are validity, the signing algorithm, and here's the CSR that I've already um, created uh, beforehand. This is my CSR and I'm using uh, this API pass through uh, command to uh, pass in my custom attributes.json here. And I'm gonna uh, pull up the uh, custom attribute uh, .json so you could take a look at it. And this is what you could pass in. And of course you could, you could use the SDK as well, or you can create a template that looks just like this. One thing to note here um, is in the world of uh, manufacturing and IoT devices, uh, there may be attributes, that, uh, things like maybe module ID or factory name, uh, that the manufacturer or the device maker uh, wants to validate or wants to be um, passed into the certificate. And so ACMPCA allows you to do just that. One thing I wanna make note of is, notice here that this is not a custom attribute. This is actually a standard attribute. So when you do pass in custom attributes, you're not gonna be creating two separate templates um, or passing in standard attributes and uh, custom attributes um, in the same file, you'll just uh, call the, you'll essentially just call custom attributes here and then put in both standard and uh, custom attributes. So here I have my um, my custom uh, attributes here. These latter two are the custom attributes and then here is the standard attribute. And so um, these are uh, designed to, to help um, conform to uh, whatever the manufacturer and the device maker as well as the supplier uh, have agreed upon. And so uh, I'm going to pass that into uh, my, uh, when I'm issuing my certificate, 
And then I'm also passing in this, this template. So we, there are a number of templates that are supported, um, a multitude of different cer uh, certificate templates uh, that we support. And this particular one allows for API and CSR pass-through. And then I'm just going to uh, use the certificate authority ARN. And this will return back the um, ARN of my certificate. So uh, we're not done yet. We have to now uh, get this certificate. And so um, in order to get the certificate, we need to run the get certificate API call. So let me walk you through that. So here um, we're using the get certificate API call. And notice uh, if you go to the second line, I this certificate ARN path is blank because what needs to go here is the certificate ARN that you generated above. So I'm going to uh, copy this ARN and I'm going to pull up Visual Studio Code. And I have rewritten out that API call and I'm just going to paste that after certificate ARN just so uh, it looks clean. So I'm going to paste this. Uh, it looks like it, uh, let me just delete that. And then what I'm doing at the end here is I'm just um, piping out uh, the chain to just uh, pull the, um, the certificate uh, that I issued. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to take that and paste that full. It, that seemed like it worked. So that should have generated the cert.pem. And that cert.pem is going to be uh, in the uh, directory that I have here, ACMPCA. And so let's take a look at uh, this uh, directory. And it contains the cert.pem file. It has my custom attribute JSON and a few other files that I've generated. And you can assume that my machine is an IoT device. So it has the private key. In this case, it was the private key was um, securely put on the on the device, and then um, I'm going to be communicating with an MTLS endpoint. And so, one of the uh, obviously most common use cases here is that I am trying making sure that my certificate uh, is presented to uh, an endpoint um, that can uh, validate the certificate. So, let's just really quickly take a look at the uh, certificate that I generated with OpenSSL. So we're going to do open SSL here, and we're just going to take a look at the cert temp file. Okay, so a few things got passed in, and I just want to focus on a few uh, ideas. And those are the, the custom uh, names here that we've passed in. And so this here is useful as uh, there are certain special subject name attributes that uh, we were interested in here. Of course, I passed in, uh, th this could be whatever, uh, the organization de desires. In this case, it was module ID and factory name. And so um, I wanted to just demonstrate that by uh, showing the certificate itself. So let's actually run the test now that we have our certificate. And on the server side, I've already set up an endpoint that requires MTLS. And so it's just a, an API that I have set up. And so first, let's make the API call. So it's my first and last name, and I'm going to make this API call to uh, hello world, uh, this Lambda function. And what this Lambda function actually does that's fronted by uh, an endpoint that requires uh, MTLS is it's just going to actually print out uh, the serial number um, of the certificate. And so when I uh, hit enter here, obviously, I haven't passed in my certificate. I'm just doing a curl because you know I'm making the request via a curl command just for um, visualization purposes. So what I hit enter, as you would expect, um, I actually can't connect to this site um, because I haven't pr presented the certificate here. So let's go ahead and pass in the certificate as well as the private key um, and then try and see if I'm able to uh, make the request. And so if this is works, what you should see is the serial number uh, of the certificate returned back to me. And there it is. So when I passed in the certificate to the endpoint, I was able to uh, receive the 
uh, serial number. So this means that I was able to connect to uh, that endpoint via MTLS. Okay, and so I kind of mentioned earlier that this is the supplier. Uh, here, my machine is acting as the supplier and I'm actually authenticated as the supplier. And via this machine, I have admin access. However, I only have limited ability on the subordinate CA uh, because the device maker is provisioning my access and the whole kind of um, draw of using ACM PCA with RAM is that we are able to uh, sort of put fine grain access controls on what a potential supplier can do to the subordinate CA. So that could be, you know, just, just revoking. And we sort of have these uh, permissions that have templates around them that uh, are uh, using least privilege. And so in this example, I can obviously issue a certificate like you saw. And the question is, can I delete a certificate? So I'm gonna try to delete a certificate um, and, and on, the, on the manufacturing side. And so I'm gonna pass in this API call, the lead certificate authority, and I'm passing in the ARN of the subordinate CA. If you remember, we had the root CA and then we had the subordinate CA, which is then shared to the supplier. So let me see uh, what happens if I try and, and delete the, the certificate authority. So as you would expect, um, when sharing the subordinate CA, uh, the su supplier won't be able to run these sort of these higher privileged commands like um, deleting uh, or uh, revocation unless you grant the permission template that allows them to do that. And you could get more information about those templates uh, as well if you if you just look at um, uh, you know RAM resource access manager uh, templates. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show uh, in this demo is I wanna show you how you can generate um, a report about what's happening in terms of what API calls and what certs are being um, requested by which accounts. Uh, so sort of this observability use case. So many customers you know, wanna know if they are gonna be sharing subordinate CAs across multiple suppliers, observability is critical and, and AWS provides the ability to do that. And I'm going to demonstrate this in the console. You could also do it in the API. But I'm going to show you uh, how generating an audit report looks like from the actually from the device maker side. And let me pull up uh, the ACM PCA. And so here is the architecture that I showed you. Uh, there's the root CA, and then there's the subordinate CA. And this subordinate CA is being shared with the supplier, as we showed in the architecture. And so to generate an audit report, you can just click on actions here uh, on the subordinate CA. And remember that the account that I'm in right now is actually the device maker. And you can see that this tab here says generate audit report. And you can just click on this uh, tab and you have the option to select the bucket or create a new bucket. Uh, keep in mind that if you are creating a new bucket, uh, you'll have to grant permissions for ACM uh, to generate an audit report and put that audit report in the S3 bucket. So that would be done on the bucket policy level. And then you have the option to do CSV or JSON. And I've already generated an audit report. Um, so we can actually just take a look at that audit report. Uh, so you would select one of these and it would generate an audit report. And so let's take a look at this and I'll uh, just show you what uh, it says. And this is a JSON report. You could have done a CSV as well, um, but it tells you the account ID as well as uh, the ARN. And it gives you a, a bunch of information uh, about uh, what details uh, in terms of what was issued. So you could see here that this account ID issued a cert, and you could see um, over here, you have uh, this account ID and, and it tells you the different account IDs. So some of those fields are um, what the AWS account ID is and which certificate uh, ARN um, it, was, it used to issue the certificate. Uh, as well as uh, some of the not before, not after, and when it was issued as well. Um, so this is sort of uh, concluding the demo. And uh, just to kind of recap, because there was quite a few things that we went through, um, we talked about uh, the architecture of um, sharing certificates across uh, from a device maker to multiple suppliers. Um, we also showed how to issue certificates with cu custom object identifiers, um, passing in those custom object uh, identifiers. 
Uh, I showed you how to get a certificate um, uh, after you issue a certificate. And then we curled to make sure that what the certificate that we passed in was being validated properly. And that was indeed the case. And finally, I showed you how the manufacturer had controlled permissions uh, on the supplier so that they could not uh, disable the certificate. And then finally, um, we looked at um, the observability of which certificates were issued by which accounts um, uh, by generating an audit report uh, into S3. So that concludes uh, uh, the demo on ACMPCA. And I just wanted to say thanks all for watching and uh, hope you all have a great day.